Hello everyone. Uh, Tinubu's illegitimate government has been running helter skelter. It would have been an Uvevekuve moment if it was not something that really, you know, really affected uh, Nigerians. And uh, sadly, it's just the sad reality of where Nigeria is and the things that we are having to go through as a nation. There is this damning report, you know, that was done, and I'm going to read that from uh, from that particular, uh, you, you know. Uh, report that that was done on the New York New York Times and oh my goodness it's as a Nigeria just reading that report it's one of the most heartbreaking moments that you can just go through but there is someone there's an analyst you, you know uh, uh, who did so after reading it he sort of like did a review of what he has re uh, uh, read and I'm going to go through and read some of these things that, that he I'm going to read what he has Put out on his ex handle. His name is Undubisi Ekekwe at ND Ekekwe. And so he said, It was very painful reading the New York Times, which ran a cover piece on Nigeria titled A Resourceful Nation Buckles. This section is tough for a nation. The pain is widespread. Unions strike to protest, to protest salaries of around $20 a month. People die in stampedes, desperate for free sacks of rice. Hospitals are overrun with women ro ro rocked by spams from calcium deficiencies. The crisis is largely believed to be rooted in two major changes implemented by a president, not my president, definitely, elected 15 months ago. The partial removal of first subsidies and the floating of the currency, which together have caused major price rises. Good people, that's uh, Ndubisi Ekeke speaking nicely. There's no need to fight the press. We need to respond with a better outcome. And that means improving the state of the economy. I'll just stop here to first of all say that, you know, of course, as usual, uh, the former governor of Lagos State, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, and his people, the Mbayo and Anuga and all of that, they've been running Helter Skelter, writing all sorts of things, you know, condemning the report, you know, putting it as propaganda, it's all sorts of, you know, their usual thing. They never accept the truth. They never take responsibility. They never sit down. They never get anything done. They just blame, 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 and hope that it goes away. Or they will use propaganda, 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 and hope that it disappears. Or they will use, you you, you know, uh, fake news and, and all of that, misleading news, and hope that that thing just, you know, poofs, goes into thin air. That, that is the thing. Instead of then, this whole issue is by responding with good policies. If all these things that are said, you begin to work on them, you get them, the, the people have a better life, better things are going on. The, the, the reporters, whether they like it or not, they will still come and do another piece again and say that, oh, you've done so well. But they think it's by maligning people, it's by attacking people, by insulting people, by coming after people. That's why they, that's how they're going to get a good report. These things don't work like that. But anyway... Mr. Ndubisi is saying that good people, there's no need to fight the press. We need to respond with a better outcome, and that means improving the state of the economy. That said, Nigeria can stop this bleeding tomorrow by announcing that the Naira is now pegged at 1,000 1, Naira to a dollar. And once that is done, you attain equilibrium, making it possible for companies to operate. What we have now is two stochastic that no meaningful business uh, modeling can happen and that is why this bleeding is escalating and just to quickly add also is that in an economy no matter how bad it is it's better you have a bad economy right that is stable than instability that you don't know what is going to happen with the bad even if the economy is bad you know it's stable. you can make decision around that badness as okay if i do this i do this, this is what i'm gonna get if i don't do this, i don't do this i won't get this you know sort of like you can able you can have permutations you can work out and say this is the risk i'm willing to take this is the outcome if i do this but where there's uncertainty you don't you can't even think about anything you do want it tomorrow something slaps you you do another thing you there's nothing you can't even take any risk so it's that's why people stay away from such you know from such a, a situation and then continue with mr end piece he said focusing on the two factors the times noted i have provided suggestions in the past 
uh, we have a lot of economists. They've been providing uh, suggestions, people who know this thing. But of course, you have people who don't care. All they think about is grabbing power. When they got power, they get there, is to control what they want to do. They don't care whose lives they are all dis destroying. He said, reverse Nera floating. The biggest challenge today is not that Nera is exchanging at 1,005 or 1,000 for two, a dollar. The issue is that the, volatil the vo volatility will make it impossible for companies to plan and, in and investors to invest, that which is what I just said earlier. The exchange rate stresses the traders and speculators, but for investors, volatility kills their plans. So pegging Nera will deal with that volat volatility immediately. Then he said, stabilizing energy costs. Nigeria must bring food subsidy for industrial customers, even as it allows commercial and residential to pay the full rates. Understand that if we do not deepen the industrial base, the vicious cycle, you know, will continue. And so to tame inflation and help companies make things, we need to assist them on energy costs, which have gone up significantly. But do not give them money. Use rebates so that only real industrial uh consumers we benefit you know we benefit uh f from this so i'm going now to to his handle because he wrote that and then he, uh he, he he okay he went to other okay this thing that he has done he has written uh something before on june 6 2024 and then on the things that you know that that needs to be done and he said uh re -industri industrial customers will benefit uh, he said Tinibu should hold a press conference and address the core economic issues, including the interest rates. Most companies I know are avoiding, are avoiding taking bank loans because of the rates. The implication is that growth will, will stall. If the interest rate should remain high, can the government offer manufacturer support via other means? My point here is that Nigeria must find ways to encourage makers to actually go to work and not just work to pay bank loans. Can we waive some taxes? Can we offer tax rebates? Simple. Simply, Nigeria must create incentives for men and women to get back to work. But first, we need to return to the old regime of a fixed exchange rate, which is a sensible thing to do. And then so, and, and that's for, 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 for what he has said. You know, the, 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 the whole issue where people uh, they, they are just attacking and whatever. The fact is the fact. This is it. This is the thing about what is happening here. There is so much crisis. Nigeria has just gone into, into a free fall. It's, it's crazy. Can't believe, you know, that the fact that someone came in less than a year is absolutely worse than Buhari, what Buhari did in eight years. It's unbelievable. And I remember when I was saying when I was saying 2018 that may Buhari be the worst of any leader that Nigeria will get. People were attacking me, were insulting me. Okay, now fine. You've got it someone worse than Buhari. See how we have got it. And the thing is that people just think this thing is a joke. Election is a joke. God do anything. Hey, we we'll pray to God. Yeah, Muslim Muslim ticket. Okay, eat the Muslim Muslim ticket now. Cook with the Muslim Muslim ticket. Pay your fees with the Muslim Muslim ticket. Do your things with the Muslim Muslim ticket. Because for rigging to happen, there must be a certain amount of numbers that we allow rigging to happen. And that's why those who blindly and foolishly said, oh, it's Muslim, Muslim ticket. Okay, fine. Yeah, you have a right to do it. I will not begrudge you your right. Let's all enjoy the hardness. After all, they say we are the ones that we cry. We are the ones that will suffer. Share now the suffering and crying is going around. <laughs>